वट इज अ फ्लैट स्लैब स्ट्रक्चरल सिस्टम फ्लैट स्लैब स्ट्रक्चरल सिस्टम इज लाइक विन द स्लैब रेस्ट डायरेक्टली ऑन द कॉलम और वॉल विद और विदाउट ड्रॉप एन हेर यू कैन सी दैट दिस स्लैब रेस्ट डायरेक्टली ऑन द कॉलम दे आर नो बीम्स प्रेजेंट हेयर एंड दिस इज अ ड्रॉप सो स्लैब वेन स्लैब रेस्ट डायरेक्टली ऑन द कॉलम दिस सिस्टम इज कॉल्ड फ्लैट स्लैब सिस्टम फ्लैट स्लैब सिस्टम इज अ कॉलम बेसिकली नॉट अ बीम स्लैब सिस्टम इट इज अ कॉलम स्लैब सिस्टम and can resist both gravity gravity loads and earthquake induced lateral inertia loads now the basic question which comes in the mind of all the structural engineers is that is flat slab safe for earthquake forces answer to this question is you know like different for every structural engineer for structural engineers who fears a lot and are even like are very conservative they'll always say that they they cannot provide flat slab in the seismic prone regions and some Brave structural engineer will say that yeah yeah we can go ahead with providing flat slab structural system with the help of appropriate lateral load resisting element for example large number of structural walls or for example large number of bracings so flat slab system is basically they have a low lateral stiffness so they swing by large amount elastically even during the low level earthquakes so since the column slab system has a small lateral stiffness and lateral load resistance this overall Lateral lift of the flat slab building makes the column incapable of accommodating the additional secondary movements. So here comes the golden question that whether we should provide flat slab structural system in earthquake prone regions. We can, but we should design properly and only for low seismic regions. So how do flat slab structural system is safe for earthquakes? On the top you can see that. This is a traditional RCC frame system that is beam column system on which we you know like the slab is directly resting uh, on the bottom is the system with structural walls to resist the lateral load you know like if a option is given to me either choose this case or this case i will i will definitely go with this case what we can do here is that we can design the rest of the columns as the gravity columns and we can design these columns as the lateral load resisting elements that is llrs in the form of structural walls so lateral drift is also minimized by adding structural walls to flat slab systems here you can see that roof displacement is significantly reduced from 116 mm to 24 mm so that is a major difference that has provided with the help of structural walls so why you know, like we are afraid what exactly will happen in earthquake to the flat slab system this is the diagram that shows what exactly will happen to the slabs in the earthquake system but basically what happens is that this part that is column and drops this area has somewhat large stiffness or large strength as compared to the slabs so there is a very uh, large chance that in when the column and the, this drop will get sway in the by earthquake forces there the cracks will develop on this area so shear stress basically on the junction of the drop panel and on the junction of slab will significantly increase in the case of earthquake forces so flat slabs building with structural walls are best suitable only for low seismic regions this is a, a finite element model for finite element analysis of what exactly happened during the earthquake forces here you can see that this red area is basically the large amount of shear force that get concentrated at the face of the or at the junction of the drop panel and the slab and now we will study about the load path so inertia forces mobilization building during earthquakes shaking travel towards the foundation so these forces travel to our structural members and thus the choice and the location of structural member greatly affect the seismic performance of the building so why braces are very important in high seismic region of very ultra high rise buildings basically what happens is that bracing provides us a very simple load path or very easy load path so earthquake forces travel comfortably through the top point to the bottom with the help of braces these forces travel in the form of tension compression in the bracing element so why floating columns are avoided basically what are the floating columns and what are the offsets so here you can see that these two columns that is this column and this column this is a floating column floating column is like the column that does not start from the foundation of the structure it starts some somewhat from in between so a common form of discontinuity in the load path in mount ram arises with the help of floating columns so load over the hanging portion takes a detour and travel to the nearest column that is continuous till the foundation so this type of structure is somewhat not desirable but this type of structure is also designed that we will see in the next two slides so as in the example we can see here that large amount of bending moment forces get concentrated here and 
very large shear forces get concentrated here and what we were saying here is that the load path of the earthquake forces from this point has to you know like travel like this so that is not a desirable profile so here you can see that this whole building is an offset so this part must be too rigid to resist all the lateral and you know like all the vertical forces now what basically are the setbacks column so another discontinuity in load path and moment frame arises with setback column that is when column coming on top of the building is moved away from its original line so load over the hanging portion again takes a detour here from this point to this point and uh, setback columns when subjected to large axial forces become vulnerable to combined axial moment shear failure so why discontinuity in load path arises due to improper grids this part i had also discussed earlier that this type of you know like grid arrangement is not desirable in the case of earthquake forces this is an ideal arrangement in which the all the columns are in single line so this type of behavior is this type of arrangement is much better as compared to this type of arrangement basically what happens is that non uniform distribution of forces occur here for example if we see this area and if we compare it with this area we will see here that some of the axial forces in compression some is in tension and large amount of shear forces is concentrated here so that is not a desirable criteria now we will study about a discontinuity load part due to structural wall so why there is discontinuity in load part to the structural wall it occurs due to the opening in the walls so openings when particularly of large sizes will affect the load path and it will also alter the structural response of the building so here you can see that on the left and right is a structural wall and on in between this is a what basically happens is that we need to design this beam with the help of these diagonal reinforcement members so with reduction in opening that is the in increase in depth of the coupling beam the overall lateral deformation is reduced and with very small openings the coupling beam form a part of the entire wall and more uniform distribution of stresses is also. so here you can see that this is a simple structural wall which is tied with the help of beams with the help of small the beams and with the help of spindles so here you can see the behavior that is here there is a large amount of you know like red that is the forces are very high and in this the uniform distribution is very uniform and now the question why structural wall should be provided throughout the height of the building this is an excellent example of those people who think the structural wall can be provided only up to some stories so here you can see that the shear, shear force distribution shear force distribution is high in this case somewhat higher in this case and very uh, high in this case but when we provide the shear all throughout the site we will see that the force distribution is now very much uniform and the force is very small this is the bending moment arrangement that gets distributed here you can see that the large amount of bending moment forces are coming but in this it gets redu it drastically reduced here you can see that the in columns also there was large amount of bending moment but in this you can see that the bending moment is also significantly reduced here, this is also an fm analysis of why structural wall should be added throughout the height of the building here you can see that the forces are high the, the we can see large amount of portion which is red that is high stress high stress areas here also you can see that and here also you can see that so when we apply the wall throughout the height of the building the forces are now somewhat distributed and